Hello, welcome back to Ethical Hacking. We're going to look at installing Kali Linux version 2.0 inside of VirtualBox. I'll try to walk you through the entire process so that you can see exactly how to install it in VirtualBox if you have VirtualBox installed. Here in the classroom, all of the computers already have VirtualBox installed. If you have not installed VirtualBox, please install VirtualBox and the extension pack before continuing. You will also need to have in your BIOS the VT-X and virtualization support enabled. The first thing we'll do is download the Kali Linux image. Go Kali Linux download. So we can click on downloads here. And then I'll pick the Kelly Linux 64-bit, and I'll go ahead and do the direct ISO download, the school blocks torrents. So because the torrent is blocked, we'll grab the ISO. So we'll go ahead and you just click the ISO and it will download it. Now it's going to put in your downloads folder. We'll see that come up in the corner here. After we download it, let's go ahead and go to Oracle. This is Oracle VirtualBox and let's create a new machine. So the name of the machine is going to be the Kali Linux 2.0. When you type that it'll automatically fill in the type of Linux and then it'll give you a version. The version we want to use is Debian 64-bit. So I'm going to go ahead and switch over to Debian 64-bit. I'll choose next. How much RAM? Well this PC doesn't have a whole lot of RAM so I'll go ahead and give it one gig of RAM. Now create a virtual hard drive. Yes we are and we're going to use, we will use the VDI dynamically allocated and 48 gigabytes. Now the disk will not be 48 gigabytes but it will be able to grow to 48 gigabytes. The fantastic part of creating a machine here in Kali on VirtualBox and saying it's 48 gig is that it will only use as much space as it needs inside of VirtualBox. So VirtualBox should make this pretty easy. So we'll go ahead and go through and look at a couple of settings. Um, over here we got that, that's right, advanced. Let's enable bi-directional clipboard, so we want that. Description, we can go ahead and put a description there. Right. Kali Linux user is root and the password is Tor. Those are just notes for us later on. Uh, the system here, we want to remove the floppy drive as we don't need a floppy drive in this computer. Processor, let's give it two CPUs and reduce the execution cap to 90%. Acceleration should be enabled, and it already is. The display, increase the video memory. Make sure that you increase that video memory or you're going to get some problems in, in performance. Uh, storage, we're actually going to come back to that. Network, enable the network adapter, use the bridge network here in the classroom, and choose allow all for promiscuous mode. We want to be able to see all the traffic there. Let's go back to storage now. We want to choose the CD-ROM that we downloaded, or I guess it's a DVD that we downloaded, from Kali just a few minutes ago. So we're going to go ahead and choose a virtual CD-ROM drive, the Kali Linux drive, I mean disk, and choose OK. Now we've got that. The next step is go ahead and press start. It should start up and give us an option to install Kali Linux. So we're going to go ahead and choose. You can choose install or graphical install. I'm going to try to choose just install and not the graphical install. Okay, English is my language here. Go ahead and choose United States. We can change these later. American English. Okay, it's configuring as much as it can right now. It's 
installing and copying a few packages here and there just into RAM just for us to use the installation. The host name, sure, we'll leave it Kali right there. Domain name, here we're actually using securitylab.ae. Doesn't really matter though, you can leave it blank, put localhost, anything like that. I'm going to leave the password Tor. And time zone, Eastern time zone works fine. We can change those settings later. I'm going to go ahead and select Guided Use Entire Disk. This is because I am installing it in VirtualBox and it is just for our labs. So we'll choose this. All the files in one partition. And finish partitioning and write the changes to disk. Yes, write the changes to disk. Okay, installing the system can take quite a few minutes. So depending on the speed of your computer, the resources that you gave Kali, it could take anywhere from, I would say, five minutes to about 40 minutes. So we'll go ahead and give it uh, a little time here and we'll resume when the installation is near completion. Okay, when it says configure a network mirror, we're going to go ahead and say if the mirror is defined, we can go ahead and choose yes. Otherwise, it's going to want us to type that in. And uh, for proxy, we can say no. Let's go ahead and leave that blank. Continue. And hopefully, it'll find the mirror automatically and pull down the information for us. Excellent, it did. Uh, it looks like this might take a couple of minutes. So we'll wait for it while it retrieves uh, the files for apt. Okay, it looks like apt is done. We're moving on now. A couple of things we can look at while the we're waiting for this installation screen to come back up is if you look at the bottom bar down here, there are a number of icons. This one that's running right there, that green and red one, that's the hard drive. The one next to it, CD-ROM, USB, network, you'll see little, little lights, or actually little colored circles appear down here when each one of these is used. This is the virtualization. In fact, I think if you hover over it, yeah, there you go. If you just hover, it'll tell you what it is. And this is for the recording. There you go. So we're still waiting on it. Looks like the hard drive's running. It's busy. So we'll give it a little more time. Okay, we're now at the point where it says, do we want to install the Grub bootloader? We're gonna say yes. So click that and it says, where do we wanna put it? Dev SDA is where you wanna put that thing. So go ahead and click okay on that. Grub should only take a second. It shouldn't take very long at all. It takes a little bit longer on my computer. It is exceptionally slow. Okay, it says our installation is complete, and we're going to go ahead and choose continue there. 
So I select continue, it'll remove some of the live packages. You can read in the screen what it's going through there and finishing the installation. If we look at the icon at the bottom of the screen, you'll see that the CD-ROM is already disabled. So it's empty. Maybe not disabled, but it's removed. So that's good news. Now the finish of the installation little menu, uh, I'm sorry, status bar here should not take very long. This progress bar should go pretty quickly. Uh, but this is a, a little older system running VirtualBox, so it may take a little more time for us. Okay, there we go. It has now finished. And it's given us the option there to start Kali New Linux. The GNU is not Linux right there. Oh, I'm sorry, GNU. GNU is not Unix. It's a recursive acronym. The GNU stands for GNU is not Unix. So this is, uh, of course, we're using Linux here. We're using Kali Linux.